Good morning and welcome to worship. It is good to have you here to worship today as we come together on this fourth Sunday of Easter. I invite you to drop a little note down below in the comments section and just let us know where you're coming in from and, and say hi. And it is so good to hear from people through the week so that we know um, how you're doing, what your struggles are, um, what joys and what blessings you are finding in this time. As we come together um, this morning, I want to draw attention to our website and on that you will find a children's bulletin that covers the same um, scripture passage that we are going to focus on today. There's also a family devotional that is on the Acts passage that we are not covering today, but it's really a beautiful passage and, uh, and has some good questions for families and uh, really all of us to spend some time reflecting on. So those are on our website and uh, under the resource section. As we come to worship this morning, I invite you if you have a candle that is near your worship space to light that. And it's a way that we invite and we remember that Jesus came to be the light of the world and that Christ's light continues to shine in the world no matter what. And that we as Christ followers bring that light into the darkness. Let us worship God. Let's join together in our call to worship. Though the way seems long and the road rough, we trust the one who leads us. Though the direction is unknown and we don't know the outcome, we place our lives in Christ's loving care. It is Christ who brings us out to green pastures and restores our souls. It is Christ who gives us hope and peace. This morning, as we come to worship, we are going to listen to a brand new song. This song is by Wendell Kimbrew, who we sing many of his songs here at Clarkson. This is a brand new one that he wrote on Psalm 23, which is our Psalm for the day. So I invite you to sit back and take in the words as he sings them. Is 
Your goodness will be my feast. Your kindness will overflow. And always your love will follow me. I invite you to pray with me. We come this morning needing you as our shepherd. We need to hear your voice. We need your protection and your care. We come to worship you because we trust that you not only love us, but that you provide for our souls. Each of us has had our own experiences this week, and so we come to worship you as the steady presence in our lives the one who walks with us through all seasons. We come offering you our gratitude for the ways we've experienced you and the ways we've seen your love being made known in the world. Jesus, we want to hear your voice. Ironically, in this time when we are at home more and things are apparently quieter, it can be really difficult to hear you. Our thoughts are running all over the place stealing our sleep and our peace. Some of us have too much time on our hands and we find we're filling it with all kinds of noise and distraction. For others, work and schooling has ramped up. New things to learn, new ways of interacting and a new busyness. All of these make it harder to hear you. Lord, please help us to find the quiet and stillness that our souls long for so that we can be with you and we can hear your voice. We ask this as we pray together in the way that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hear these words of love and forgiveness that come to us. Even though we have wandered and become lost, the shepherd calls to us. We can place our trust in his loving care, for we are the sheep of the pasture. Blessed and given hope. Thanks be to God. Let's come now to hear the word of God. Let's pray. God of rest and renewal, Still our hearts and minds with your spirit. Open us to receive your word so that we may come to know you more fully and to follow you more faithfully. Amen. I invite Jackie Limas now to come with our scripture readings for today. 
Good morning. We turn now to hear the word of God. This morning's reading will be reading Psalm 23, and I will be doing a reading from the King James Version. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And now our gospel reading today is John 10, reading verses 1 through 10. And this reading I will be using the New Revised Standard Version. Very truly I tell you, Anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus uses this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our reading from the Gospel of John begins with this curious image for Jesus. Jesus as a door or translated in the New Revised Standard uh, Version, the NRSV that we read from, as a gate. When we hear or read this lesson from John, I think that we often jump right ahead and right to thinking about Jesus as the shepherd. And there's a reason for this. When we read the full chapter, this is indeed where we end up going. We also tend to go there because we have other scripture passages, like our psalm, that gives us the image of the shepherd. We have songs that we sing that take us to a shepherd. We don't have a lot of songs about a door or a gate for Jesus. And so in this day, we're going to just pause at that early um, section and think about Jesus as the gate and what that means to us. Before Jesus gets to thinking about and saying that he is the shepherd, he talks about his identity as a gate. And he says that he is the gate, not once, but twice in verses seven and nine. It's a rather curious description for him. Scott Hosey, who is the director of the Center for Excellence in Preaching at Kelvin Theological Seminary in Grand Rapids, has some insight into Jesus as the gate and he shared it in a recent commentary. He talked about a, another scholar that had written a commentary, and I'm going to quote what he said. 
he, he shared that this other scholar said, apparently while doing some research in the Middle East, the Bible commentator ran across an Arab shepherd. The shepherd was not a Christian and did not know the Bible, but he was a keeper of sheep. And so he was showing off his flock as well as the penned in area where his sheep slept every night. And when they go in there, the shepherd said proudly, they are perfectly safe. But the scholar noticed something. Your sheep sleep in that pen. And yet I just noticed that the pen doesn't have a gate on it. Yeah, that's right, the shepherd replied. I am the gate. What do you mean? The man asked in startled wonder. After my sheep are in the pen, I lay my body across the opening. No sheep will step over me and no wolf can go in without getting past me first. I am the gate, he said. Hmm. Such an interesting image. Can't you almost picture this pen with the shepherd laying in the entryway? The shepherd being the gate. Maybe this helps to explain a little bit of why Jesus seems to flow so effortlessly between being the gate and the shepherd. He can move between these images and draw us in. Jesus says, I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. And he goes on to say that I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus offers both protection, provision, and life. To help us more fully understand what this means, we have to go back to the ninth chapter of John and revisit the story of the blind man who was given sight because this 10th chapter is really a response to Jesus healing the man who had been blind since birth. In chapter nine of John's gospel, Jesus heals the man who was born blind. He, this man has lived his entire life blind and as an outcast. Jesus came to him, made a mud cake of sorts, put it on his eyes, telling him to go and wash them in the pool of Siloam. When the man did this, his sight was returned to him. In restoring his eyesight, though, Jesus gave him so much more than the ability to see what was in front of him. The man would have lived a life where he was constantly begging for his next meal and he would have been exposed to the elements because he wouldn't have been accepted into the community into which he was born. He was a man without a community and left alone to fend for himself. The man blind from birth is saved from isolation and marginalization. Not only will he have practical things like food and a place to live, but he will know the safety and the security of being in community. When Jesus says, I am the gate, he says it as a life-giving, life-saving gate. All are welcome to come to Jesus. Jesus calls the sheep by name and they follow because they know his voice. During this time when we are sheltering at home, we might think it would be so much easier to hear the voice of the shepherd calling us. After all, we can't be out and about doing all of the things that would normally fill our days and our evenings. And this very well may be the case for some of you. But for others, strangers, thieves, and bandits come in and draw our attention away. They are different, but they are there. There's the constant news cycle, 
the wonderings about when we'll be able to open up businesses and various things. What will come first? What will life after sheltering at home look like? When will a vaccine come? How will I pay my rent? How am I going to buy food for my family? All these things and so many more come into our minds. Strangers, thieves and bandits, taking our attention away from the Good Shepherd, making it difficult to hear the voice of the Shepherd in our silent prayers. In times like these, perhaps one of the best ways to reacquaint ourselves with the Shepherd's voice is to go back to familiar scriptures and familiar songs. Through these, we might remember the shepherd's voice and be drawn back into the abundant life that is promised by the one who is both the gate and the shepherd. We're going to practice this now. Bruce is going to lead us in singing, The Lord's My Shepherd. be together in the same way for worship or our activities, some things do remain the same. Well, sort of. The board had their first meeting on Monday evening via Zoom. And this is important because the board has things that they need to talk about and that they need to look after. They talked about, uh, of course, our budget and our finances, and they talked about the property. I wonder, did you know that each and every day, someone from the board or session goes into the church property and checks it to make sure that everything is safe and secure and as it should be. We are so grateful to the people that are doing this and um, as we continue to worship and to be the church, we continue to steward the gifts that God has given to us. We pray, we do acts of service, and of course we give our financial supports. And I wonder if you would pray with me now as we dedicate all of these things to God's glory. 
Let's pray. Loving and generous God, our hearts are filled with gratitude for all that you provide for us. Giving back is a natural response. Please bless all that is being done and given in your name. May these gifts be multiplied so that those who are recipients of our care and ministry can be blessed by your love and the peace that comes from you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to join our voices together even though we are apart. We're going to join together and sing at number 650, He Leadeth Me. as we come to the prayers of the people. I'm going to welcome Bruce Cross, our music director, to lead us in our time of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence in trust and in faith to give our thanks and praise for the many blessings which you have bestowed upon us, as well as to ask for those things which are necessary for our spiritual health, our physical health, and our mental health. We give you thanks for the signs of springtime, which are all around us, even in this time of anxiety and danger. We thank you for the spring flowers which are emerging. We thank you for the birds that sing. We thank you for all these reminders of the goodness of your creation. We give you thanks and praise, Lord, for the good news which we struggle to filter from all the bad news which assaults us. We thank you for news of progress, for a vaccine, 
We thank you for those who are working to find a way to make us safe. We pray, Lord, for all those people in less fortunate parts of the world for whom it is an impossibility to stop working, for whom it is impossible to physically distance because of the poverty in which they live. And we pray, Lord, that those nations which are blessed with wealth and prosperity will help the world out of their abundance. We give thanks, Lord, for all those through necessity who are taking on risk for the greater good, for those working in health care, for those working in nursing homes, for those who continue to work to bring us the goods we need. Surround them, Lord, with your loving kindness. Keep them safe. We pray, Lord, for ourselves, for those in our circle who are experiencing this time as a time of anxiety, as a time of illness, as a time of loneliness or separation. Give us the wisdom, Lord, to see the necessity of measures taken against this dread disease. Give us the steadfastness to maintain those behaviors we must maintain for as long as we need to do so. We pray, Lord, for our leaders, both spiritual and temporal. We pray for Gail, our minister, that she may be strengthened each day as she shines a light into the darkness. We pray, O oh Lord, for leaders around the world who have all been thrust into momentous decision-making, feeling ill-equipped, feeling pressure from every side to close down, to open up, to stir up the economy, to keep everyone safe. Give them, Lord, the wisdom of Solomon to guide our cities, our province, and our nation wisely in the coming days. We bring before you, Lord, those whose names are written upon our hearts. Bless them, Lord. Keep them safe, so that when the time comes that we can be all together again, not one will be absent. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for all the ways in which we see your hand at work in this world, for when we see young helping the old, when we see the able helping the disabled, when we see people working together to protect their family, their neighbors, and their city. Give us the grace, Lord, to persevere in this path, and when the time of normalcy returns, grant us the wisdom to carry on with those good things which came to the fore in this time. Grant us all the wisdom to carry on in kindness and gentleness. You, Lord, make all things new. We thank you. We trust you. A prayer in time of uncertainty. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy, in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Today we are going to do something a little different. Often when we are together, we sing a choral blessing at the end of our service. And today we have the pleasure and the joy of listening to Steve Bell, who is a Canadian singer and songwriter, storyteller. And he is offering a blessing for us. It is entitled, For the Journey. May the Lord bless and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May his graciousness be like an endless stream. And may the Lord show his favor to your house and your neighbor till the last remaining stream striving seas may he grant you peace 
In my heart there's a sadness building up Every turn adds to the cup As the losses match the measure of my gains And in the shadow of this curse Where the best implies the worst if you're like me, you need to hear somebody pray. May the Lord bless and keep you. May His face shine upon you. May His graciousness be like an endless stream. Till the last remaining strains of striving cease, may He grant you And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you and those that you love and pray for on this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>